What is the difference between HGH and GH secretagogue peptides? This video is sponsored by Mizumi, the number one pick for men on TRT. Shop now at Mizumi's using the link in the description of this video. Yes. So you want to take it? No, go for it. So <laughs> this is this is what I like to explain to people because you know, I mean, we could get into the science, um, and it gets you know, it could get a little complicated. But so the difference between GH, what we've seen, right, is that um, long term use. Uh, first of all, it can be very expensive to maintain, right? That's number one. Number two, at least in the United States, and you, this would be a surprise to a lot of listeners, there are very, very limited reasons in which a doctor can legally prescribe GH, at least in this country. And there's, you know, those three things are HIV, you're a burn victim, or you're suffering from dwarfism for kids. You know, or that's like your thing. levels have to be under 90 in order to prescribe it. You know, in case, in, case, in case you get inspected, you have to have proper documentation yeah. for that medication. And so, you know, so so there's a there's a number of different factors that you have to consider. Number one, obviously, cost. Number two, um, you know, we see that like testosterone, right? When you uh, you know, you when you're on a, a GH therapy, which you're you're gonna need a substantial amount for a specific amount of time, and when you do that you, you know, there's, a, there's sort of like um, the jury's still out. There's different schools of thought, but at least from, you know, we like Mark Gordon. He's a, an amazing neuroendocrinologist. You had him on your show. Neuroendocrinologist. Yeah. And, you know, he says that, and we've seen this on labs, that people after 20 days of doing GH, their natural production of growth hormone can shut, shut down, down for up to a year or more. And so those are not things that you want, especially when you're you're thinking, you know, two, three thousand dollars for a therapy of GH. Um, we and also, most people think that growth hormone is just for growth. <laughs> yes. It repairs absolutely yeah. everything. So imagine shutting down your pituitary from producing that very hormone that has yeah. over a thousand different functions in your body. That's why we never touch that. And, it, and it's a beautiful medication, by the way. Yes. It's exceptionally, um, uh, you know, efficient and effective. Yeah. But again, you know, we've also seen people that have been on GH for a very long time that it actually begins to have diminishing returns, right? Like you actually see low IGF-1 levels. Uh, and then you can have side effects like insulin resistance. You know, some people suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome. Acromegaly. You know, for that abuse, type right? of thing. And, and, and the, re the, the mechanism in which your, your system shuts down, your HPTA, is because um, it, it bypasses the negative feedback loop, right? So it gives you sort of like a square wave, super physiological pulsation. Rather than a pulsatile form, right. which is how you release natural growth right. hormone. So, so the advantage of peptides versus GH, also GH, you know, a lot of people, they have to get it underground, right? And I, I'll tell you, for those of you watching, that, you know, most of this stuff is one of the most uh, counterfeited Pseudo. medication in the world. So you have to be very careful, right? Uh, and you wouldn't want to be doing this without the supervision of a doctor anyway. So the great thing about peptides is that they don't bypass the negative feedback loop. So you don't have a shutdown. It's kind of like, I like to compare it, uh, the difference between uh, testosterone and, and uh, HCG, where and HCG clomiphene. or enclomiphene, where it naturally, you know, it gives you endogenous production of testosterone. So, uh, you know, growth hormone secreted got peptides work in the very same way. So you can use them, you can be in and out, right? You can use them for a very specific desired result with a specific purpose, use them for a few months and then be out and not have to shut down your production and don't not the side effects and the associated cost. Sorry. And no, and besides that, we've seen the combination of a GHRH growth hormone releasing hormone like Tessa morelin, along with the strongest GHRP like EPA morelin, used on a three to six week trial, phenomenal results. Yeah. And they're just inducing their body to pulsate more growth. I kind of like to Say it, it's you're putting your pituitary and your hypothalamus to work out. You're making them release a bigger pulse of this natural circadian rhythm of growth hormone that you have. But you're not causing the square wave, which is what growth hormone does, which right. is spikes. And that's where you have the shutdown. Almost like the testosterone when we spoke about taking the daily pulsatile form right. rather than taking an injection that's going to that's going to peak for more than 24 hours. And anytime you have a peak over 24 hours, you're telling your body to shut down. Right. So what we're trying to do is prevent by all means having a patient shut down their production. Have we seen it? No. Could it happen? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to put at jeopardy the client. Um, by giving them something that they can actually benefit by using a peptide. 
once again, as we said, we have to make sure that the ground is primed in order to do them. It's not just for anybody. You have to have certain conditions in place in order to use them correctly. And again, to get it legally. Yeah. I mean, listen, our doctor doesn't do it, of yeah. course, because we know the law. We've spoken to many attorneys about this issue. This is one of the biggest things that the FDA comes uh, to clinics like us, you know, people that are in the, in the health optimization space. And they, they were clear. I mean, it's, it's only three reasons why you should be prescribing growth hormone anyways. And what I find as well, the problem with peptides, unfortunately, most people, most, most practices that we see don't know how to use them properly. No. They have to, again, strategically be used because if you, if you take too much of it, it's going to oversaturate the receptors, canceling out its effect. Yeah. So not necessarily more means better. Right. It depends on how you time them. So for example, for anti-aging benefits, you can use it once a day. For fat burning twice a day, for muscle building and fat burning three times a day, even with BPC to reduce inflammatory response. You know, it just depends how you're using them and sequencing them to have the desired result. And, and, you, and you have people, to really understand the half-life of the medication. And as well. to get really the same type of results as growth hormone, literally, you would have to inject two to four times a day. Who's willing to do that? Maybe we are because we're dedicated to our health, but most people are not going to be that. Yeah. driven to do it that way you know so you can only stay at the anti-aging level which is helping you restore the sleep skin elasticity helping you a little bit with a bur burning fat more uh more focus all these other benefits right which is once a day but unfortunately the real benefits are twice or more per day now not like for te testosterone for example we've seen most patients will respond very well with BID twice a day, yeah. like one milligram AM, one milligram PM. The results we've seen is phenomenal with that. Yeah. And it's a lot more affordable than using growth hormone. And you put yourself less at risk. Yeah. And without any um, suppression of the GH production afterwards. Correct. Yeah, but that's why, so for example, if you just run 12 weeks of uh, testosterone, yeah, you could shut down certain production or oversaturate the, the, the receptors. Receptor. That's why you should use it three to six weeks at the most. most. Because any, it, by the way, testosterone is the strongest of the growth hormone releasing hormones, which is helping you produce and manufacture more growth hormone. But there's just so much you can push the system to produce. Right. You get me? Yeah. And then, it's kind of like saying, you know, I'm going to go from Florida to California, you know, pedal to the metal, never releasing the pedal. Yeah. You have to release the pedal at some point, right? You yeah. have to give yourself a break. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Consider becoming a channel member for exclusive features like loyalty badges, early access to new videos, funny stuff like rough cuts and bloopers, members only photos and status updates on the community tab and members only live stream chat. On desktop use the join button next to the subscribe, on mobile use the join link in the description.